Remember that for most analysis with time series data, the data has to be stationary. So just a quick reminder on what stationary implies. A time series is stationary when it oscillates around a constant mean and has no trend in it. If there's a trend in the data, but it oscillates around this trend, then we would call the data trend stationary, because subtracting the trend would make the data stationary. And for this demonstration, I have created some data sets. So um, let's not lose any time and let's have a look at the data. So the first data we're going to have a look at is the GDP of the German Democratic Republic, or um, Eastern Germany from 1960 to 1989 in real prices and by the way this is real data and I've already read in the data and by now you should be familiar with how to read in data in R if not don't worry just take a look at one of my former videos and you'll understand how to do that so anyway the data set is called GDR and the variable we're looking for is called GDP and I know it's a bit confusing so let's have a look at our GDR data set so we put in view you're already familiar with, oh, sorry, not typing, so view, open parentheses, GDR, and there you go. Okay, so this is our data set. Um, you can see our variable GDP over here, and you can see the time variable year. And uh, as you can see, we are dealing with yearly data. So let's create a time series variable. And as in the last video, we're going to use the zoo package for that. So let's load it. So we put in library, open parentheses, zoo. Okay, so uh, we've loaded the zoo package, and let's um, let's let's uh, use the or let's declare a time series variable. So let's call this variable GDPTS because it is a time series variable. Then we put in the oops, the assignment operator, and then we're going to use the function zoo open parentheses uh, gdr dollar sign gdp comma gdr dollar sign year mm, remember we are creating a new time series variable called gdp ts okay so this is our or will be our time series variable um, for that we're using the zoo function Okay, we are using the zoo function and it takes two inputs. The first input is the name of the variable we want to use for our time series. So this variable um, is the variable GDP in our data set GDR. And first we tell R that we are using the GDR data set now by putting in GDR. And then we put in a dollar sign to tell R to um, or to tell R that uh, we're now declaring the variable and the variable inside the GDR data set would be the variable GDP and and I do this because we're going to use different data sets in this video so there's no data set attached and let me put in a comma and the second input we're going to use is the time variable and again we use the GDR data set and then we're going to use a dollar sign and then we're using the variable inside this GDR data set called year and now we hit enter and this should create a time series variable um, now let's plot our time series variable okay so plot open the parentheses GDPTS hit enter and there you go, this is our time series variable. So I make sure that it's a little bit bigger. Okay, there you go, this is our variable. Okay, first things first, it seems to follow a linear trend, but can we say whether it is stationary or not? Well, first of all, let's put a linear trend in there, okay? So how do we do this? We simply use year as an explanatory variable for GDP. So let's call our linear trend lin fit. Okay, so this will be the linear trend for this um, variable right over here. Okay, so lin fit assignment operator. Oops, assignment operator. And then we put in lm. You're already familiar with this command. This is the linear model command. And then what we're going to do is we put in the name of the variable GDP TS. We want to calculate the trend for. Then you put in this curly uh, curly operator, and now what you do is you put in GDP dollar sign 
because we are using our time variable and the time variable is year inside the GDP data set. So what we do is we take GDP as an uh, as a independent as a dependent variable and we use the time variable as an independent variable and this will calculate the linear trend for our data. So next what we oops sorry uh, not GDP GDR of course <laughs> I already said it's confusing okay there you go. Um, Next, we're going to plot the regression line of LinFit. Okay, so we put an AB line. You're already familiar with that. That's how you do the, uh, how you plot the regression line, remember. And the regression line this time is exactly the same, uh, same as the linear trend. So we put an AB line, open the parentheses, and then just put in LinFit. Because remember, the regression line is or equals the uh, trend line over here because all we did was calculate the linear trend. We hit enter and there you go. This is our linear trend. Um, now, um, now you can see that there is a linear trend. Okay, so that's fantastic. Um, next, I want to plot the data set again. This time we're using dots. Okay, because as you can see, it's a bit confusing. We have two lines that, well, not that are not identical but they look the same right so let's plot our data again but this time we're using dots instead of a line so we put in plot gdpts this is the variable we want to plot comma and then we type in type uh, equals and then quotation marks and you need to put in pch and this will plot our data in uh, or with little bullet points over there okay and also plot the trend line. So we put an AB line on the parentheses, lin fit, and this should make things much clearer now. So this should help us, okay? Um, remember that there is a trend in our, li or a linear trend in our data. So that definitely violates the assumption of stationarity, right? So we, we've said it has to oscillate, oscillate around a constant mean and there should be no trend in our data. So there's definitely a linear trend. And, um, or however, our data could still be trend stationary, meaning that it oscillates around our trend. Well, does it? No, not really, right? You can see that there are these little runs around the, uh, the uh, linear trend. So dot below the line, 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 below the line above the line and this goes on for some time then it will be um, below the line for some time and so on so it's not oscillating around our trend um, but luckily we have a formal statistical test for that so we can test whether our data is stationary or not well in fact there are actually several tests for that and the most popular test for this would be the augmented dickey fuller test and remember that the augmented dickey fuller test is not only testing for stationarity but it is also testing for trend stationarity that's pretty neat isn't it but remember that the trend has to be linear so if there's an exponential trend or whatever um, well that would not be a linear trend it's only estimate or it's only estimating whether it is trend stationary stationary when there's a linear trend um, if it's not a linear trend a trend you have to transform your data and if you don't know what that means well check out my video on nonlinear transformation so the augmented dickey fuller test is part of the R package T series and for that we have to load the package so we put in library Open the parentheses, T series, okay? Okay, there you go. Uh, you can ignore this little warning messages over there. Okay, next, um, we're gonna use the augmented Dickey Fuller test for our GDP variable. So what we do is we put an ADF for augmented Dickey Fuller dot test. Open the parentheses and all you do is you put in the name of the variable. So GDP TS G not DGP, GDPTS. You hit enter and you're done. So as you can see, it only takes one input, the time series variable. So you can also see that the output is not that long, right? So just, just a few lines. Um, well, it'll tell you the test statistics. So 
Dicky Fueler right here. This test this, this is the test statistic. And how many how many lags it used um, in order to test for a unit root. But most importantly, it gives you a p-value. And the null hypothesis of the augmented Dicky Fueler test is that the data is not stationary. So the alternative hypothesis is that the data is stationary. Well, a p-value of point 0.86 is extremely high and we therefore have no evidence to reject the null hypothesis of uh, no stationarity. So our data is therefore not stationary. Um, and this is just what we thought by inspecting the plot, right? So if you take a look at the plot on the right, this is just what we thought. And the augmented Dicky Fuller test is just, well, indicating that, that our data is not definitely not stationary. So it's not stationary and it's also not trend stationary. Um, okay, let's use some other data. Uh, for this, we're going to uh, use real data on um, grain prices in Austria in the early 19th century. And the data set is called Austria and it's already loaded in R. So let's take a look at the uh, data. So view, open the parentheses, Austria, hit enter, and this is our um, data. And again, we're going to declare a time series variable called price. And again, it's yearly data. So price, uh, let's call it price TS, assignment operator. So we're going to use the zoo package for that. Open the parentheses. We're going to use the data set Austria, dollar sign, price, comma. And then we, now we got to declare the uh, time variable. So again, it's the Austria data set, and we're going to use the variable year in that data set. Okay, price TS, great. Um, so let's plot it, okay? So let's plot our data. So plot price TS. Hit enter, and there you go. This is our data. Um, also, let, let's estimate a linear trend, okay? Shall we? So linfit2, Assignment operator, LM, because we want to fit a linear trend and you already know how to do that. We put in price TS. This is our dependent variable, the curly operator over there. And then we're going to use Austria dollar sign year, because that is the time variable. And this is how you estimate a linear trend. So hit enter. And this is our linear trend. Now, since there is no obvious trend in our data, or well, I can't see, see any trend in our data, um, we wonder if there really is a trend. So let's check the summary of our L, uh, uh, linfit2 regression. Okay, so let's check whether there's actually a significant trend in our data. So we put in summary linfit2, hit enter. And there you go. As you can see, the linear trend is far from being statistically significant. So this is a linear trend over here. So this is the estimate, okay? So it estimates a positive uh, linear trend. However, the standard error is much larger than our estimate. And take a look at the p-value over here. So uh, we can definitely say that there is no statistically significant trend. So in other words, our data has no trend. Um, but it is stationary. So this is the question. Does it oscillate around a constant mean? Well, have a look at our time series again. Does it oscillate around a constant mean? What do you think? Well, I don't think so, to be honest. But um, let's plot the mean, okay? So what we do is we put in AB line, open the parentheses, H, and I will explain what I'm doing right now. Mean, open the parentheses, price ts okay so this will plot the mean um again we are using the a b line function because we want to fit a straight line but uh, we are telling it that we're only looking for a horizontal line h right Be because we we assume that there is a constant mean and um we tell um the function that we are looking for a horizontal line by saying h equals and the horizontal line should be equal to the mean of pr price TS. Okay, so this is how you put in the mean line, or yeah, this is how you indicate the mean of your data. Um, so let's take a look at our data. Well, it's definitely not oscillating around a mean. 
um, although there's no trend in our data. But let's use the Dicky Fuller test for that. Okay, so let's check whether it's stationary or not. So we put in ADF.test, open the parentheses, price TS, hit enter. There you go. So let's take a look at the p value. Well, we have no evidence to reject the null hypothesis, and our data is still not stationary. So this data again, although there's no constant, or although there's no uh, obvious trend in there, it's still not oscillating around a constant mean. So we say, oh, so we checked it with the Dicky Fuller test, and we can say, well, although there is no trend it's still not stationary because it's not oscillating around our mean. Okay, so let's let's have a look at one final variable. Okay, so one final variable x. And we're gonna plot that variable x right now. So this is our variable. So remember, this is purely simulated data. Let's say this is some economic variable that would me was measured from 1810 to 199. Uh, 1909. So again, this is absolutely simulated data. However, as you can see, there is no trend in our data. Also, it seems to oscillate around a constant mean of zero. So let's let's put in the uh, horizontal line again. So AB line H equals mean of X. Okay, this is our mean. Yeah. The mean is equal to, well, closely equal to zero, and our variable x is oscillating around this constant mean. Well, let's use the Dicky Fuller test to check whether we finally have some stationary data. So adf.test, open the parentheses, x, hit enter, and there you go. So let's have a look at the p value. So it's very low and we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis and we can assume that our data is actually stationary. So finally, we can use it for time series regression without getting spurious results. Great. But wait, if I had to simulate data in order to find a stationary time series, does that mean that most time series cannot be used for time series regression? Well, no, of course not. Um, with a very simple transformation, you can make every time series stationary. But those, this will be the topic of my next video. So just remember, this time series right here is stationary because it's oscillating around a constant mean and there is no trend in my data. This data does not have a linear trend, but it's still not oscillating around a mean. And this data was not oscillating around a mean and also had a linear trend. However, it is not trend stationary because it's not oscillating around this trend. So I hope you've learned something and you can always use the Dicky Fuller test to check for uh, stationarity.